Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Matt Horn is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. More and more androids show signs of deviancy. There are millions in circulation. If they become unstable, the consequences will be disastrous. My name is Kara. This is where it all began. The world's forge. And it will all end. Hey, it's Gavin Reed. Hello? Yeah, pick up the phone. Come on, pick up the phone. Get a move on! On the line, we've got Neil Newbon talking to us. From where are you talking to us from, Neil? Somewhere where I'm not going to tell you. Hello, how are you doing? Wonderful. I can't say much more than that, except we've got you here for Detroit Become Human. Thank you. Yeah, nice to speak to you. Yes. Uh, it's been out for a bit. Uh, yeah, the reception for Detroit has been overwhelming. I'm so pleased to have been a part of it. And also so grateful to all the fans that have been uh, very supportive, very vocal as well about how much they enjoyed it and uh, about how many playthroughs they've been making with it, especially the character work. Mm. Obviously, I've been monitoring Brian's feed for some time and he's just playing it for again and again. Brian, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, um, he's a lovely guy as well. He's a very lovely actor to work with. He and I had an awful lot of fun together on the set. We did uh, quite a lot of hours. But yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience. I loved every single day. We didn't, we didn't have a bad day working and it was just a joy to work with him so um yeah i'm a big supporter of uh, brian so what was production of the game like for you it's a performance capture and mocap i've been working for about eight or nine years now and it's very similar in, in fact in a lot of ways to film shoots they work with the same protocol you have rehearsal time you have uh, script readings um and also you get to work in the volume um essentially with the environment with your quote-unquote costumes which are obviously are just skins and mesh sometimes which you don't see but yeah, it was a very it was a very enjoyable experience. It was very similar to how I shoot in film and television. I have to say, David uh, was wonderful to work with as a director. I really enjoyed working with him as well. And the whole Quantic team are a really amazing uh, group of professionals that are very supportive of the actors, but also hugely collaborative. Which, personally speaking, I view performance captures as an incredibly collaborative experience. We're very much in the environment the whole time, or waiting literally next to the volume. Uh, albeit on a comfy couch, but you're you're with everybody the whole time, which is a really lovely experience, and I really enjoy, and I'm very grateful to to have had the experience to have worked with so many lovely technicians and specialists, as well as actors. So uh, the typical day really just was was like that. It was scene after scene. We rehearsed. We talked it through with David. We talked it through with Benjamin, who's also the other director, and uh, we would then work together. We'd improvise a little bit, a lot. I mean, Brian and I were very similar actors in that way that we like to play. Uh, organically with the script and with the characters a lot and uh, David was very forthcoming with allowing us uh, that, that facility but also being a good steady hand to say and, and Benjamin as well a good steady hand to say um, oh actually we can't do that because of this or we need to stay this line because of this or what have you so they were very good uh, captains of the ship. Had you known much about David's work before because obviously he's done a couple of these these games now Oh yeah, I've been a huge David Cage fan since uh, I had a PlayStation 1 back when I was <laughs> years old. Uh, so, uh, uh, basically, yeah, I, I've been a massive fan. I started with Fahrenheit, which of course was the, the, the kind of genre-defining game. I didn't play very much Heavy Rain, sadly, or Beyond Two Souls, but I know a lot about them and I, I watched them. But yeah, Fahrenheit hooked me in, actually. I was very much hooked into the idea of what the, the game represented in terms of a interactive narrative with locomotion, but also with quick time events. I really liked it. And uh, I also liked the storytelling. I thought it was very compelling. But I really liked uh, what they were trying to achieve with the games. And I think Detroit actually is the pinnacle of all of those games, sort of standing on the shoulders uh, in creative terms of all of those games. And I think it's really, I think it's a really wonderful endeavor. I think the project's fantastic. If it was a, you know, a TV or a, a film uh, project, it would be a huge smash hit. As a game, it's a huge smash hit. But it has all those qualities that makes good entertainment. And also, I think we touch on a lot of subjects that are quite hard-hitting in some respects. And I think that's interesting that games now really can talk about social issues a lot more than shoehorning a, a story on, which, you know, back in the, the old days of games, 
the stories are very much an addition to the gameplay, whereas now they're, they're in, uh, a very important immersive part of the experience, which for an actor is fantastic. Mm. I mean, with, with obviously mocap and performance capture, where do you think it's going in, in, in terms of the future? Well, I think we're already in that place of where it's going. I think it's just going to develop as, as it is now. As I said, it's an immersive experience and also the quality of the storytelling, the quality of the acting, the quality of the uh, voice work um, from amazing actors across the globe has been going up and up and up and up and up. Certainly the storytelling is a lot more uh, complex, I think, by and large. Uh, and there's a lot more demand from the audience and a lot more interest from uh, the new generations of gamers to desire these incredibly compelling, interesting stories where you feel a real connection to the world, but also the characters in them. Uh, this will continue, I think. In terms of the technology performance capture, I mean, I, I did a project called Final Fantasy XV Kingsglaive, which was an animated movie. And I, I was very lucky to play two characters, one of which I voiced and did combat and stunts for, as well as the performance. I also did the full performance combat and stunts for Nyx, which was the lead, which was voiced by Aaron Paul, who's incredible. But I got to play that role completely. And I would say the fidelity of the faces, the skins, there was no uncanny valley in the entire movie. It was absolutely extraordinary. Uh, the level of detail and the level of immersion in terms of watching it as a film. So I think the quality will get better and better. I think at some point the actual technology of mocap and performance capture will change dramatically. Uh, there's a thing called organic motion, which is still in its fledgling state now, but they don't use suits, they just use silhouettes. And I think at some point there will be a, a moment where we'll just be able to capture actors in the volume without suits on, just in costumes, if you will. Although they may still wear neutral costumes if they want to interchange things easily. The technology will change to such a point where you won't need marker systems. You'll just capture people and then uh, and then animate them from there. Are there any sort of funny anecdotes you could share about the production of the game? Um, there are funny anecdotes. I'm not going to share them. They're private. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Although I will tell you one thing. Uh, we did do a 17, I think it was like a crazy 16 or 17 hour day. And at one point I looked at Brian and it was almost like, it was almost like running a marathon. And he just looked at me, and we both sort of blinked at each other and nodded, and it was sort of a continuation. It's not really a funny story, but it was more like the, the spirit of what we were trying to do was so... We were so elated and so energised what we were doing, that even doing a 16, 17-hour day was thrilling, and we had the stamina to complete it. Funny stories, man, they're private, so, yeah, I'm not going to tell you anything about the stuff that really happened. But this is a good story that I like a lot, because it summed up the experience for me, that we did this incredibly long day, very, very heavy scenes, very detailed, a lot of playtime, and uh, we loved every single second of it. It wasn't a bad moment for us, it was great. Obviously, we need to talk about you, yourself... With regards to your career, with regards yeah, to your sure. career, which actors or actresses have been your favourites to work with and why? I've been very blessed. I've worked with some incredible actors. I worked with Liam Cunningham, uh, who's an amazing Irish actor, who's been everything from Game of Thrones to uh, Hunger, and we got to work in Thailand for six months. He was playing my dad. Uh, I worked with Jesse Spencer, who was a real delight to work with. Uh, I worked with Stephen Fry, my very first feature that I ever did. Again, playing my dad. I think this thing of meeting amazing actors and they become my dad. And I think there's a good thing in that. Um, and I worked, uh, I worked with Alexander Skarsgård. I worked with quite a few other really interesting actors. And I've been very blessed to have learned a lot from the actors that are, at the time, especially had way more experience than I did, and been quite open to work with them. And the one thing that I really learned was to listen to other actors that I had a lot more experience, arguably possibly more talent, and really be humble about that, about the gift that they were trying to give me about the advice. Billy Zane I did a film with, and he gave me actually some really lovely advice. He was very sweet to me, and gave me some advice that stayed with me throughout my life. There's a, a personal friend of mine, a close friend of mine, sorry, called Roy DeTrees, who's an actor of 94 years, and he's been everything from Hellboy uh, to the Golden Army, or three Golden Army, whichever one it was. And he used to give me a lot of advice about being an actor, because at 92, I think it was when he stopped, acting as a career and he would still get nervous for auditions etc etc and he would still give me these great advices that if you get 92 years old and are still getting nervous for auditions well it means we're all in the same boat so actually there's, there's not a huge amount to worry about in terms of getting something wrong or worry about what people think of you because at 92 if you still you know are a working good working actor making money and being happy with playtime, then, then it's, it's a wonderful aspiration to go towards. So I've been extremely lucky. I've worked with, you know, I've worked with uh, Clancy Brown, who's a really amazing actor. He's a wonderful actor. He's gorgeous to, to watch and work with. 
Uh, Leonard Headey was wonderful to work with on King's Glaive. There's quite a few people, so I'm not going to uh, keep going on. But it's 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 really humbling to work with people that you admire as professional actors. I don't get starstruck. I don't really lose my lose my nerve around people that are quote unquote famous. But I get very very wowed by people that are incredibly talented as professionals and have a fantastic professional attitude. Um, I was very lucky to work with Andy Circus on his animated version of Planet of the Apes. He was uh, wonderful uh, to us and very hugely supportive of the actors and he's an incredible talent and i even met woody harrelson who popped down to see what we were doing and that was an extraordinary moment especially because i was basically improvising as an ape and i turned around and there's woody harrelson it's like okay i've just been basically throwing theses at imaginary people fantastic great nice to meet you mr harrelson so yeah i've been very lucky like that obviously you were in hollyoaks i was in hollyoaks i had an amazing experience it was yeah fun. and obviously you died in hollyoaks <laughs> Yeah, I was out of choice. I mean, um, I worked with the great Emmett Scanlon, whose career is incredible right now on television, and he's a wonderful actor to work with. Our chemistry was just absolutely perfect. We had a real who, and we designed... Um, Walker sort of became an antithesis to his character. So for me, we weren't really playing a soap. We were playing a drama between these two guys, and we were very lucky that the producer, the executive producer, Emma Smevitt, was very kind and very supportive about our choices and really let us play and improvise quite a bit, which on uh, essentially was a soap opera. It was quite unusual. The Late Night, I still think, is one of the best late nights I've ever done. And I think it is a road trip. It's a road trip drama. It's not a, it's not a soap opera anymore. And I think that was the aim for us, was to not have to repeat scenes, not have to play heightened emotions, but to play actions and to, to really treat it like a drama. So, yeah, I really enjoyed Hollyoaks, and I absolutely stand by my work on it. The reason I got killed off was because I didn't really see a future for him, and I felt that his story had ended, um, or should end, because there's really nowhere for him to go. It's unlikely to kill three or four people and end up working in a coffee shop in a soap opera. I mean, people do, but it's like, you know, I can't really justify that to myself. So I asked very gratefully if they could kill me off, and they were quite happy with the idea of that because it made sense to them as well. And so I did uh, just over a year on the show. I was very lucky to be brought back again to finish off the story. And, uh, yeah, I had a great time. It was good. I mean, do you still watch it now? No, not at all. I watch box sets a lot. I don't really have time to watch TV. Like, I don't channel flip or just catch a show. I have to rinse things on, like, a, a, a rare day off or something. But, you know, I mean, soap operas are great, and people love them. It's not really my bag, to be honest. But at the same time, you know, I had absolutely no issue whatsoever going on the show. I really enjoyed it. I had a really intriguing character to play. And, uh, yeah, I loved working on it. I had a great time. And also the people at Line Pictures were incredibly supportive, very sweet to me, and... Uh, really helped me a lot and also gave me a lot of free hand in creating a, a very wonderful character with the writers and directors and producers. Well, I'm going to give you a one-minute plug, Neil. One-minute plug. To plug Detroit Become Human. And I would say anything else you've got coming up, but half of it you can't tell us. Recently I had a few things released. Um, I did a lot of mocap work for the uh, Somerset Isle DLC cinematic trailer. It's in Destiny 2 cinematic trailer and also some more stuff is in game as well. I've just finished working with a very big company I really wish I could tell you about on a project which hasn't been announced, which really sucks. Um, and I'm due to go out to Japan to do something that I also can't talk about, um, which will be coming out later on. But that's going to be very, very big and very, very exciting. I'm very happy about that. So plugging Detroit Become Human. It's an amazing experience. You should go and buy it. There you go. <laughs> and as a final question, Neil, a final question, because uh, we're about 30 minutes from kickoff. What do you think the uh, result's going to be? I'm not a football fan. Uh, I love watching England games, as everybody else does, when it's for the World Cup, and that is the exception that proves the rule. Um, so I don't know. I don't know much about Croatia. Uh, apparently they're very good. <laughs> but then England have proven to be very, very good. We're in the semis now, which we haven't done since, what, 2006? I think was the last time. I honestly don't know. I mean, this is a new squad. The last time I watched the World Cup was probably two World Cups ago. So, you know, I don't know any of the players because I don't watch football, man. I think as a team, they've been playing really well. I think, why not? Anything can happen in team sports. But I have no idea who's going to win. I'm actually quite excited to watch the match, which I will be, um, and not know. So, uh, yeah, it'll be quite exciting for, for me. <laughs> I'm not really a pundit, man. My old man's a sports journalist, so he will have a very strong opinion about who's going to win which could be either team, actually. Uh, but for me personally, I hope England wins, but I couldn't tell you. See, I'm so nice, Neil. I asked you a question about football instead of asking you a question about Brexit. 
Yeah, you shouldn't ask me about Brexit. I get very angry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brexit is a is a ridiculous idea. It's completely pointless, and it only serves to make England into a banking country with no regulations. This is just my opinion, man. But Brexit is a very, very, very bad thing for anybody other than people that work in banking financial institutions, because nothing will change. The thing is that nothing really will change. Everything will cost more, and to travel will now cost more, and it'll be a pain in the ass, and it'll be difficult, and the generations that go after us may be robbed in fact of the friends the lovers the the partners the experiences that they may have had easier than uh, they, they will do now hopefully we won't do it hopefully what's happening now with the cabinet will implode and the people that are trying to con us into doing this which is insane um will step aside and just let it fall apart and so we can carry on say terribly sorry europe we are still a part of you and even if we were left in brexit we'd still be a part of you because you can't physically remove us from europe we are in europe and connected to europe so you know i mean basically that's the long short so there we go i've answered brexit <laughs> i wish i hadn't asked now well neil it's been a pleasure interviewing you yeah you too Matt. obviously fantastic to have you on the show Thank you very much, and thanks for asking me as well. Another problem. Thanks very much for your time. I hope you continue to enjoy Detroit, and um, yeah, I'll let you know as soon as the next couple of things that I can talk about come out, and you can play that as well. Thank you. All the best. Bye bye.